Though Schmerkay is a composer, American composer of music for concert stage, film, and modern dance. Her portfolio includes works for symphony orchestra, chamber ensembles, choir, soloist, as well as electroacoustic installations. Her music has been featured on national public radio and in concerts in New York, in Poland at the festival Gdynia Klasika Nova, is that all right? <laughs> Modern Music Festival in Beijing, China, in Spain, at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., the Knoxville Museum of Art, and here in Asheville at the Electro Music Festival and the Diana Wortham Theater, among others. Dosha was born and raised in Poland. At the age of nine, she began her music studies at the Elementary School of Music, concentrating on classical guitar, flute, and piano. She continued her education at the Conservatory of Music in Gdansk, majoring in flute performance. She holds a Bachelor of Music in Composition from the University of Tennessee and Master's in Music in Scoring for Film and Multimedia from New York University. A Renaissance woman at heart, Dosha is also a visual artist. I own two of her paintings mm -hmm. and a writer. Her debut model, uh, novel, a psychological thriller entitled The Flow, will be published later this year. Mm -hmm. Welcome, my friend, Dosha McKay. <laughs> so how about a little bit about how you have started this piece, and where are you with the piece? Well, uh, there are three songs that I'll be setting to music. Uh, so we have three poems. and. Um, as far as where I am creatively, I have just finished a very strong draft of the second song. And uh, sometimes I start from the middle, sometimes I start from the end, but this time I, I went from the beginning through the middle, going toward the last poem in the order that you have heard them today. Uh, and I said strong draft because I don't like to commit. <laughs> <laughs> to what I have written because there could still be changes, there could still be neurosis, and you know there could be events leading to maybe changing everything and starting over, but at least I feel that I have really, let's just call them really strong drafts, and when I write I like to sort of, you know, sit on them for a few days, few weeks, and if they stick, if they hold, if they are okay in the next two or three weeks, then I'll probably stay with them. But right now I feel well, if I say that I feel good, would that be like <laughs> tempting the, <laughs> the fate? No, I, I feel good about them. And um, as I listen to the poets reading those poems, I just have this emotional response because as they read, I, I heard the music that I wrote and just kind of tugged at me. And those, those words have like really special meaning for me now because I have spent so much time with those words, mulling over them. and you know, setting them to music and working with them extensively. So I, I do feel good about them right now. So strong drafts. <laughs> um, Dosha has her own YouTube channel where she talks about her process to uh, an audience of, I guess, mostly composers. I don't know. I think it's a varied audience. Maybe some younger composers, yes, and maybe um, other composers who are professionals, but also other artistic people are just people who are curious mm -hmm. about what it is that we do. I mean, it is, um, we still, we composers are kind of a rare breed. Uh, people, when I, you know, sometimes people ask me, what do you do for a living? I tell them uh, I'm a composer. They don't quite know how to take it. So, <laughs> You know, uh, I think I have all kinds of people in my audience, mostly just curious people, or a lot of times people who want to find inspiration either for their music writing or another artistic discipline. Mm -hmm. They just feel that maybe they want to kind of um, find some similarity, some inspiration from what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to share. Um, you know, describing in the past, I have described other pieces that I worked <coughs> on and maybe my creative routine, and people somehow find it inspiring for some reason. Well, I'm inspired by you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, when I watched the video, it was interesting because she 
called each one of us. She scheduled an <coughs> a, a chat with each one of us involved in this project, all three poets and all four musicians. And in her video, she was saying how we all seem so surprised. <laughs> We've had um, been presented with music as musicians in the past where they might have written a flute part on the piano mm -hmm. and it may be real easy to go Woo -hoo 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 on, on the piano and it doesn't sit well on the instrument. So this is really exciting for me to t get a tailor-made piece, not Rosalind's nodding. Um, so many places. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, we, the flute is sti we steal from the violin quite a bit, and there's some things you can just do very easily, dee, 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 dee. and it's a lot of lip work for us. But uh, in this case, I said, okay, you know, as a matter of fact, since you're asking me, um, I don't want to go below middle C. Please don't make me play low Bs, and no piccolo. No piccolo in this piece. I'm okay with the piccolo, but not when I'm saying I want my Bs this way. What did you ask for, Rosalind? Do you remember? This is our, like our wish list. Oh, oh, it's so funny. It's like, the, uh, well, the low register in the bassoon tends to be a little sharp, and uh, I really don't like low D. Uh, you know, <laughs> We're picking our notes. Or I, I'm fine with fast passages in the high register, just as long as it doesn't continue and you go over and over again in the high register. <laughs> yeah, mine was, please don't make this too hard. Okay. <laughs> Kind of it's, it's an interesting thing because there have been works in our in our history where maybe a seven minute work this will be longer this is 13 to 15 minutes uh, we pay by the minute <laughs> um, but I, I remember spending time on a seven minute work that's flute and cello and there was part of it that was just wicked difficult and I thought how absurd that I'm spending hours and hours trying to get this in my hands for a piece that's going to be gone, done in seven minutes and you only get to hear it one time. Yep. <laughs> so you don't even know when we're messing up or, or having struggles with it or how it really should sound. We're just presenting it the way we think so. So that was really neat. Um, but she's also dealing with guitar in this piece with a whole other beast. Um, you're a flutist but you have guitar background, classical guitar, which is great. Mm -hmm. Um, and the mezzo, do you, can you remember what you were talking about with Brittany? Brittany Seaman is our mezzo. She's at Brevard College. If any of you came to the Sunday afternoon concert we just did, she's singing this work. Um, remember what she said? I found that really interesting in your, in your video. Yes, we had a really interesting conversation with Brittany. Uh, Brittany is a mezzo-soprano, and as you know, uh, women who sing opera tend to be divas. <laughs> No, I'm just joking about that part, but... Um, <laughs> She's not here so we can talk about her. <laughs> no, she was not that way at all. But uh, I had a really interesting conversation with her because we talked about um, the intricacies of her voice. And every voice has uh, different characteristics. And it's not enough for me just to know the range of the voice. I mean, you can just open the book and read about it, but... I have to write the music in such a way that she feels comfortable singing it, and not just comfortable, but that she's happy in her part, so to speak. <laughs> so the mezzo-soprano has this middle range where she's most happy about and most expressive, but then she also has this lower range that can be very mellow and deep and colorful like and deep like honey, but also she likes to venture out to those very high notes, uh, maybe even as high as uh, soprano, and with uh, Brittany, we're lucky enough that she has, can reach really high up there, but <laughs> I have to be careful as a composer not to uh, tire her voice. So I need to be careful to put the majority of, um, of the music within the middle range. And if I go up to the high register, just let, let her just kind of visit, just a little bit up there. And I have to be careful about how she approaches. She asked me specifically, you know, if you want to go to the high G, it's really easier for me if I can do like a jump. Ta -da. You know, like a perfect fourth is a nice jump for the voice. So those are a lot of things that you maybe don't think about as an audience. You just listen to the song and hopefully it sounds good. But, you know, why does it sound good? Uh, uh, hopefully it sounds good because it's well written 
and it's performed by somebody who knows what they're really doing with their voice, with the music. I feel like I have such a deep responsibility to the poets, uh, to their poetry, that I want to do the best of my ability. It's not just about, oh, you know, here are some words and here's some music underneath and there you go. No, I mean, you, you've heard the words are so deep to me, they're so transformative that I want the music to underscore the emotions. I want, uh, I want to take the words and, you know, they're already here on at this level and I want my music to take them even higher so they're even more expressive, they're even more meaningful and uh, this is why we have to venture out into those technical issues and um, that's why I spend so much time with uh, with the instrumentalist, with the singer and with, with each poet talking about their their poetry. 